So I would say just as a base weapon with nothing else, Lord of Wolves is technically the highest DPS in the game right now. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Gminers here, and as you probably saw in the thumbnail and title today, we are going to be testing the DPS of Lord of Wolves. Now, I've seen a bunch of people making videos on this as well, but since I did go through last season and test a ton of weapons, including 4th Horsemen, Linears, Izzy Plus Rockets, Acrius and Pellet Shotguns, and even some new this season, I figured I'd be able to give a pretty good realistic review of where this thing currently lies, and then also show you guys where it actually ranks in its DPS value. If you guys do like these testing videos and you want to see more like them, make sure to drop a like and sub down below, and let's get into some numbers. So in case you guys did miss it, Lord of Wolves has actually received some pretty major changes over the last few months. Back in August, it got some reworks, biggest of which was a 60% reduction in firing delay, which if you guys know anything about how DPS values work, messing with the fire rate of a weapon has way more of an effect on DPS than increasing damage. So even though this is only a delay reduction, it is still going to have a huge effect. And then in mid-October, we got an additional 40% weapon buff inside of PVE, but it does sound like it was accompanied by a 25% reduction in damage technically, so this might only come out to be a 15% buff, but either way, the DPS rate of this thing is now at a really good level. Looking over at the damage numbers we hit on Carl, the base weapon is going to hit for 4,217 in the body, and then 6,077 in the head. Now, all other shotgun crit multipliers, for the most part, as far as I'm aware, are a 10% or a 1.1x multiplier, so this comes to a whopping 44%, which is definitely super strong. And then testing with the exotic perk active, our body shot value jumps up to 5,903, and the headshot up to 8,508, both of which are exactly 40% higher than using the weapon without the perk active. Release the Wolves also gives us max reload speed when using the weapon, and then on top of that, this is also where that 60% reduction in delay between bursts comes into play, so this weapon actually feels like it's full auto whenever you're using it. The downside to this weapon is that using double shotgun reserves doesn't give you any more ammo, which means if we were to hit every headshot with this weapon, while Release the Wolves is active, we would be dealing 120 total shots, each at 8,508 damage, which is 1.02 million damage in total. Looking at some of the other top options in the game, just for total damage output, in my recent video, I tested linear fusion rifles, so of these, Cataclysmic was in the 2.4 million range, depending on the role you went with, Taipan and Storm Chaser were up at 2 million, and then Reed's Regret was slightly under at 1.8. And then when it comes to some of the other better shotguns in the game, Acrius with Trench Barrel was around 1.92 million, 4th Horseman was around 836,000, and then lastly legendary shotguns like Ikelos with Trench Barrel were at 940k. So to be honest, as far as total damage output goes, Lord of Wolves is actually in a really solid spot, surprisingly. Hitting every crit is super easy to do with something like Divinity, and even though there are options with well over double the damage output, depending on the boss you go up against, all that damage might not even be needed. Obviously, the bigger issue for this weapon is going to be DPS, and then more specifically the DPS and damage we deal per mag where you're going to see a lot of drop off. So to test this, I compared the time it took in a Luna Faction well to shoot off all the ammo against 4th Horseman, which is the current king of DPS. Starting off with Lord of Wolves, since we do already know these values here, it is going to take us 11.48 seconds to deal the entire reserves, which again is going to be 1.02 million damage, which brings our total DPS out to 88,933 damage per second, which is actually super good. And then the 1 mag, 2 mag, and 3 mag values can also be seen on screen now. Fourth Horseman, on the other hand, we can see hits for 2501 damage across 12 pellets each, and this does follow the 1.1x crit multiplier, which means our first shot that we deal is going to be 33,000 damage. Now, each shot after is going to scale up per the exotic perk, and these can be seen on screen now, which will make the total damage of one mag go all the way up to 230,000 total damage. We were able to deal the full 20 round reserves, which also cannot be increased with double reserves for some reason, in 10.5 seconds exactly, so this comes out to 87,657 damage per second in total. And then once again, the 1, 2, and 3 mag DPS values can be seen on screen. 
So just comparing these two, because they are the most similar in their burst DPS nature as close ranged exotic shotguns, I would say they are pretty dead even. Fourth Horseman is obviously going to be way better at killing something if you can kill it in just 5 shots, like an Abomination, but if you are using the full ammo reserves, then Fourth Horseman is going to need max reload speed in a Well of Radiance to even compete, when Lord of Wolves already has that included. However, Lord of Wolves is also getting 40% more damage from hitting crits, so if you can't hit crits consistently, then this will also make it fall off. If you do have something like Reign of Fire or Radiant Dance Machines, then Fourth Horseman is a clear winner with no exceptions. If you guys did want to know where this thing does rank against other top options for DPS, this right here is a chart of DPS values. Most, if not all of these tests, were for either the full ammo reserves or a good chunk of them, so it's not like anything is going to be favored here because reloads were not included in this timing. Looking at the linears on the list first, most of these are going to be in the high 60,000 range. Kata was the god roll with bait and switch where I shot off 20 shots because that was equivalent to 2 mags, and then Taipan, Reeds, and Stormchaser were all also 2 mag equivalents. Reeds was only higher than Taipan here because of accelerated coils, which is a super tiny difference. Acreus ended up being super high on the list because I combined that with Reign of Fire to bypass reloads, and I think that's fair to put on the list because Reign of Fire would actually make the Lord of Wolves DPS worse because the Ikdash animation is longer than just the base reload speed. Fourth Horseman with Radiant Dance Machines is also at the top of our list with 113,000 DPS. Radiant Dance Machines pair perfectly here because of the timing of each mag of Fourth Horseman, and then Izzy plus Rockets is also in the high 60s. So you can see that the only things that ended up beating Lord of Wolves was Acreus and Fourth Horseman, both of which required a second exotic just to hit these numbers. So I would say just as a base weapon with nothing else, Lord of Wolves is technically the highest DPS in the game right now. It also deals its full damage in 12 seconds, so I'd also say after that is obviously when it will fall off and then other options will become better. If you guys do want to fact check some of the damage numbers I had in the video, all of my DPS testing videos referenced here will be linked below. Let me know what you guys think of the Lord of Wolves right now. I am definitely going to try and figure out where this thing can potentially be used in speedruns and other activities. Speaking of which, we are in the process of running Vow of the Disciple speedruns and speedruns for Grandmaster Nightfalls on my Twitch, so a link to that and my Discord server will be linked below. That's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.